So to demonstrate the um, interpolated footsteps, so to say, I'm going to use two actors. Just a static mesh cube that's set to movable, and this candlestick that's going to jump around trying to follow the cube. So to show you how it looks like, uh, let me eject, and I'll start moving this cube around, and you'll see the candlestick, no matter where I put it, it's always going to land on the cube. And this is m made using uh, basic interpolation. So let me stop that one. The actor we're going to look at is this candlestick. Uh, it's just an example model. So let's open up the blueprint. This is the candlestick. And first, I w just want to show you this quickly. This is the custom curve that you can create in the content browser. You just right click and add it as a uh, curve float object. So I just made this curve from zero value and zero time to time one zero. So this is just zero to one. And the same with the height, zero to one. It's very useful to use this because then you can think of it as percentage. We're going from 0 to 100% in time, 0 to 100% in height. This can later on be multiplied to any value that you want. So you know 1 times 200 is always going to be 200 as an example. So in my blueprint here, um, I first add an, an actor to follow. This is the cube that I, I assign inside the level. The start position and end position is going to be updated. I'm going to show you later on how that works. Uh, height curve is the curve I just showed you. Interpolation time is added upon with delta seconds every tick. And the duration is for how long I want the bounce to be. Like how here I have one second, which means every bounce is going to take one second to happen. And you see, I add the delta seconds to the interpolation time. Then I check, has the time passed the interpolation duration? If it has, I reset it to zero. I would recommend not doing equal here. That's an oversight I did. It should actually be... Uh, just greater because we want to include the highest value there. Um, okay, so now we have zero to one here. Uh, if I if the time passes by, I reset it, and when I reset it, uh, it's at the end of the bounce. So uh, the candlestick has reached the cube. At that location, I store that location as my initial location to begin from. So um, whenever it resets, the candlestick starts at the end position, which will be at the cube. And then on every tick, no matter if it's true or false here, I will get the end position from the cube. This is because the cube might be moving around, so we need to constantly know where it is. And as you can see, the, the start position is only queried when we reset which means this point is static in our interpolation while this one is moving around. This gives us a constant pace from start position to end position no matter how we move the cube around. So here, here's the math in itself. I have a start position and I want to move to an end position and in between these two points I have a vector, a total distance I want to travel. But we don't know where on this distance we need to be. And to know that we're using the time float divided by the duration to get a, a factor here which could be thought of as a percentage, 0 to 100%. So if I have the total length with a direction, I can multiply that with this interpolation value. So I can say 20% here times the total distance to travel, which means I will be 20% alongside the interpolation. So this is the most basic linear interpolation you can do. Then I add that to the start position, so start plus 
20% of the distance in this case. So the candlestick will now be 20% on its way to the cube. But to add the um, jumping motion, I'm going to get the interpolate position, which is 20% on its way to the cube, and then I add the height from the curve. So let's go back to the curve. Let's say I'm 20% ahead, so it's around here somewhere. So you see 0 0.75 in value. So we're around here somewhere, which means I'm almost at the peak of the jump. So at that time I have 0 0.75 times 50. Here, here is where it gets useful if you have the, the curve in 0 to 1 value, because I know the peak is going to be 50 now. And if I, for example, were to make the curve with other values here, I would have to do more math in my head. But now I know that it can't reach more than 50 and it won't go below 0. So um, I then add this value to the height, which, and then at the end I set the actual location. So let's watch this again. Uh, I move the cube around. So you see, at every time it hits the cube, it resets the start position. And no matter where I move the cube, it will always end up on where it is. So if I move it slowly, it's going to look a lot better than uh, moving around like this. Then it looks kind of funky. But that should be good enough for an interpolation for moving some legs.